My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and uh, I want to do a continuation on um, this whole idea of complex. And um, there's another buzzword that goes around, which is points of failure. Um, now, this is a funny thing because everyone thinks that every time that there's an interaction between two things, so let's just say we have, you know, a rocker. We have a rocker with a pivot point and then we'll have the nose, and let's just say it's an inserted nose um, of a push rod. Let's just say it's that and then on the top here, obviously, you know, a valve tip, a retainer, all that shit with a spring kind of thing right so just so you have this full system everyone thinks well this this and this they're all points of failure not really it, it, in reality um you know the more parts you have there's more chances of failure but there's also another point of contact which is here so a lot of some push rods are aluminium rods with steel tips, hardened steel tips, inserts basically, or more just tips. Some are like the uh, CX500, that's a, a steel tube with some hardened steel tips, stuff like that. Now here's an interface between two dissimilar metals, two com basically two parts in to make a component. Um, but that doesn't mean that that is a point of failure. So you might think, well, it's the fact that they're moving, you know what I mean? Well, if you're going to call it that, then the spring itself is a moving entity. And then that means that the interaction of the spring against the valve retainer, it means that the collets that are in here, it means that there are just countless components that are touching that could be points of failure. The fact of the matter is, is that the pivots for um, bloody hurricanes, the pivots for um, rockers are fucking golden, yeah? These things never usually fucking fail or die, just like the tips on these rods. Doesn't mean they won't, but this is the difference between complexity and points of failure. The more parts you have doesn't necessarily mean that they are, you know, it's more likely to fail because you have more components. It's not about that. When we say complexity, we'll get rid of that for a second. What we mean is that something can be, it's the forces and the actions that are, it's the forces that it goes through, it's the environment it lives in, and it's all the variables that this component goes through. An excellent example is this. Oops, fuck that at the last minute. Is a piston ring. A piston ring is an excellent example of something. No, let's leave it on there, fuck it. Guffed it a bit. Let's do that right, fuck it. Looks worse now than it did before. Uh, is a piston ring. Okay, Nora. Come on. That's just gosh. Let's just do a small one and let's just. There we go. There we go. A piston ring. <laughs> Booyah. Right. A piston ring is an excellent example of something that is complex. It's a complicated... It can get very complicated, let's put it that way. Right? Because you have stuff like... Um, there's the thermal properties. Thermal. And this can be... Um, this is material. So how the material behaves due to these heat cycles there is also friction there is also uh, expansion and this is just thermal right so then there's um, the stress the thermal stress then there's the um, material that we've, we've kind of covered that's like the hardness we'll just put hardness in there 
in a sense, changing the chemical properties of the material. This is just thermal, right? Then we've got uh, stuff like flutter, right? Uh, twist. We've got resonance because it's it's basically a spring. Is this thing? So we call all of these. These are physical. Right, then we've got other attributes of the ring. Right, so we've got wear. We've got um, conductivity. We've got uh, the friction of the ring itself, just the, the coefficient of friction itself. Then we've got uh, mass, the weight of it. Right, we've got all of these things that are going on, right? Loads of things, and it's just a fucking ring, right? We've got dimensionality. So basically, so the fact is, if a if a bore is perfectly round, then the ring needs to be round when its ring gap is correct. As soon as you spring it out, that's out of round. There's the dimensionality of it. Then there is stuff like the gap. You know, stuff like this, it's, there's an awful lot to it, right? There's an awful lot just to this very, very simple component. A lot of things in this engine, there are a lot of rings, a lot of snap rings, a lot of eclipse, a lot of kinds of rings. But none of them are like this, you know, none of them have to go through this environment, you know, stuff like this. Um, it also has to resist fuel, it also has to resist oil, you know, just chemically. So it's chemical resistance, there's even that, right? You know, like acids that can form, blah, 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 carbon, all these kind of things. It's got to, you can see that just from this ring, just from the fucking ring, we're not even talking about manufacturing yet, right? Not even talking about that. Dimensionality is the only thing that we have there that's close to um, any kind of manufacturing concerns, really. Material, yeah, that's a manufacturing concern. But just design, just design. Uh, there's other things you can have on here, stuff like coatings. Right, there's just all sorts. As you can see, something that is very, very simple, it is very, very simple. This is as simple as you can get. It is one material, usually a pattern coatings, um, one material that you make into a shape, right? That's it. And it's a ring, right? With a fucking hole in it. It's just a split, you know, it's not a constant, it's not a constant ring. What the fuck? All of this from that. Now, if you look at other, you know, components, like an exhaust valve or an intake valve, it's pretty much the same kind of thing, but an exhaust valve has more process steps and it has different interactions than a ring does. There's a few other things to consider. But what I'm saying is, this is something that's very, very simple. You know, this is very simple. Or it seems like it's simple. This is the thing. It seems like it's simple. Well, it's just a fucking piston ring. You know, how simple does it get? Actually, there's a lot to consider. A lot to consider. And this is not just for the top end high performance engines, just engines, you know, your 250s, your 500s, stuff like that. It, it matters. Stuff like flutter and twist and resonance and the harmonics, stuff like that. It, it, it all, you know, these are kind of all bound in together. But you get what I mean? It does matter, you know, um, for longevity for performance, for just the fact that it works, it doesn't just break within five seconds. The, the thermal properties, this ring, you know, a lot of the heat is transferred from the combustion process to the cooling system through the rings, you know what I mean? And then there's its interaction, which we've missed off here completely, it's interaction with other components around it, i.e. the ring lands and the ring grooves, the piston itself, the... Um, 
oiling systems of a ring and piston assembly, stuff like that. We'll go more into this because I want to use a piston ring just as an, as, as an example because a lot of people don't realise that a piston ring is a seal but also a bearing as well. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit. 